not comparable. It's like comparing apples and tennis rackets. What you were talking about in Iraq and uh, uh, the Balkans were the fact that the countries you were going off, uh, going against did not either have an air force or air defense. The countries we were going against did not also have the capability of launching nuclear weapons. The, ca the countries we were going against did not have uh, the potential for taking a regional conflict and growing it into a global contract, uh, conflict. We had the capability of setting in a no-fly zone, which requires the enforcement of other planes not flying. How do you do that with Russian aircraft without engaging them? And secondly, what I would suggest is, as soon as you say, okay, we're gonna do a no-fly zone, most of the damage is being done by ground artillery or ground missiles. Are we then right. going to say we're going to have a no artillery zone? So, uh, you know, it, it is a very simple uh, uh, comment for people uninitiated with combat to throw out there as a potential for stopping the dynamics of, of combat. And it won't because the Russians are on the ground. They're using mostly artilleries and missiles to create the damage. And a no fly zone might stop uh, Russian aircraft from bombing, but it would then put us in the middle of a conflict against a world superpower which would grow exponentially uh, and, it, and then it doesn't become a matter of mitigating risk it, it's a matter then of us gambling will mr putin yeah. use nuclear weapons or not and he has already said he will so i think for everyone who's suggesting we do a no-fly zone you might want to consider the the implications and the repercussions of doing so and it's not pretty to do that